I'm Madeline Harvey, and welcome to day six of our seven day vocal makeover challenge. The purpose of this challenge is to use the foundations of voice to build one right after the other a completely integrated, fully sophisticated, balanced vocal instrument. So, in today's lesson, we're going to talk about how to generate a beautiful tone using the subtleties of vowel shapes. We're going to get in there and create more clarity and more quality and just overall more beautiful sound. So if you like today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up or click that subscribe button below. I would love to see you here more often. The video that you're about to see was taken as a clip from a live lesson that was shot earlier today. Enjoy this exercise. But if you want to watch the full live and participate in the multiple exercises in that live, then I invite you to click that join button below and become a member of this channel. As a member, you'll have exclusive access to all of our lives that we do every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Now, if you live in a country where that's just a little too late or a little too early, fear not, you can access the members only area with over 70 hours worth of voice lessons. That way you can continue your practicing in between our lives. So again, just click that join button. It's only $4.99 a month and your contribution helps to support our channel. That way we can continue to deliver awesome content that's just for you. You ready to get started? Here we go. We're gonna introduce your voice to how to effectively use vowel sounds today. And that, that bounces off what we talked about on day five. So in day five, we said, that there are two major ways that you could shape your vocal tract. Now, I'm being very specific about where in the vocal tract we are shaping. We're, we're shaping a little bit in the back of the throat, so where the tongue and the throat sort of meet, and then also a little bit in the upper part, known as the nasal port, where we maneuver a little bit of our soft palate. We have two major ways that we can maneuver that. We can go long, and we used N-E-R as a means of lifting and stretching that soft pellet open. And then we did E or HA as a means of broadening that vocal tract. Now your vowels will take a very similar path, very similar path. But whereas we over exaggerated those shapes day five, today we're actually going to go really subtle on the vowel shapes. And I want you to look at it like this. When you work with vowels, yes, it will give you a really consistent tone. And yes, it will make a beautiful tone. And yes, it will blend your, your overall voice. But I want you to see it in the way that a photographer uses diffusers to sort of bounce light around a room. That is exactly how we want to be able to maneuver our vocal tract by use of the vowels to sort of bounce the sound around our skull. So again, day five, brought the sound forward into the nasal lilt. We bounced the sound forward and we felt what it felt like to bounce that sound forward. And then we used E or HA to sort of open and bounce that sound backward to get a sort of complementary, movable shape tone. Now we're going to go really, 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 really subtle, really subtle today. But here's where we will see kind of the rubber meet the road. If you remember from day one, we talked about relaxing and how we want to be so, so, so relaxed that we don't necessarily feel the influence of the jaw, the tongue, or the back of that throat. We use the sound huh, H-U-H, to play with. We just went And there's no shape, no prettiness being offered there, but it at least allowed us to feel what it feels like to use our breath to feed into that resonating space. So today we're going to use a very, very similar philosophy. I'm going to turn that up a little bit so I hears it. There we go. So when we talk about vowels, I don't, I don't want to get too herky-jerky. In the back, I just want you to feel subtle, 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 subtle little things. If anything, I want you to really think in terms of overtones. So 
if we go back to day three, when we mapped out our resonance, we said that we have resonance within the nose and the head spaces, the nasal port, and then the mouth, the throat, and the chest spaces. We want to teach the body what it's like to sort of move the sound that includes all those spaces. So we're going to say the word overtones, and we're going to mean the nose, the tone of the nose, and the mouth. So we're going to default a little bit towards the nose today. It's just a much healthier uh, way to introduce blends of vowels in terms of getting that beautiful tone that we're going for. So let's first start by using H N. Now N, no vowel there, two consonants. Hmm. Mm hmm. So you're gonna feel your tongue rest up against the the hard palate. Swallow all that mouth space. Create a suction in your mouth. Hmm. Mm, no mouth space. Then you're just going to blow that H through your nose. Let's try it on middle C. Good. Now, because you don't have mouth space available, can you feel those vibrations being sort of pushed up, that pressure, that air kind of pushed up into the head? Yeah, we're going to use that as a blend space. So we're going to effectively place a lot of things in our nose and then see if we can bring them down into the mouth using the vowels. So let's just first get that started. We'll do individual notes. H, N. Feel that breath focusing itself up. Yes, can you feel that you just have to continue to exhale to create that consistency of the tone? Let's just do a couple more. It should get lighter. We're in the nasal port right now. Try that one again. Good. Now, if you hear little tiny fluctuations, that's okay. We're not using any vowel sound to help stabilize it. It's just H N. Two more. Good. Now, that's just a great way to get that air flowing first. We don't want to be too reliant on what vowels can do for our voice. We always want to make sure that before we come into vowel work, we get air flowing first. The air flow is the boss of us. Good. So now that we've got the air flowing up into the nose space, now we're going to make a very, very, very subtle E sound. But look how subtle. I want you to let the jaw hang, tongue hang, and just be relaxed. Good. So I just want you to observe an exhale on like a, what's that, an S, S sound, a really relaxed jaw S sound. Can you hear how there's a remnant of an E sound in that? Good. 
Good. That's that's where we're going. So we're going to go back through our C4 to C5 range. And we're going to make a very, very, very subtle he sound. He. Now there's a little bit of shaping. You will notice that as we start to work with vowels, what the air, if the air was fluctuating a lot, moving around a lot, it will stabilize a little bit more when we work with the vowel, just because that nasal pore is being stabilized by the shape of the vocal tract. That will give it a little bit more stabilization, a little bit of equalizing. So we don't want to be like, he like we were day five. We want to be a lot more subtle, more speech-like. Feel what your tongue is doing. Try that again. Good. Can you feel the tongue doing a little bit of shape? A little bit of shape. Being a little flat in the very, very back. It's like a flat space. The, the soft palate is lifting along the sides because E is a broader vowel. So you're going to get more of a circus tent mm, and less of a teepee. Okay, so circus tent, E, less teepee. Mm. Okay, <laughs> so try it right here. Kind of defaulting a little bit to that head voice. Let's let's let that happen. Let's actually aim for that. Just a little stretch in the back. Very subtle, but it does feel a little grand, doesn't it? going first. Don't try to go if the breath does not go first we have nothing to stabilize and then the throat muscles contract they get a hold of it. So imagine that you are a wind instrument like you're a wind instrument you'll feel that you're just sort of blowing through your face through this slight subtle E sound Nice stretch in the back.
Good. Now, just like day five, if you notice that your tone goes like that, that is some shaping, some shape change in the vocal tract. So feel that it's, it's like a very subtle yawn, but it's an E-ish sound. Yeah, you really feel that you're blowing, you're blowing your face like it's a wind instrument, but this tiny subtle little shape gives you that, almost that trumpet kind of shape. If we take just a second to observe what that E feels like, kind of modeled by this, it wasn't so different from our nerve. So it gives us this, this lengthening of that vocal tract, which allows the vocal tract to take on the shape of a trumpet. Very narrow in the back, and then it just sort of gradually opens. So just like our photographer analogy, we are bouncing the sound forward so it can come forward. Versus back, which we will play with in just a second. So stay with me on the E like a yawn. that really, really, really subtle sound. I personally love to start with E because of its the way that it shapes. It feels synonymous with a yawn. And its benefit is it just really opens up, lengthens that vocal tract and opens up this overtone. Notice how it's very uh, full in the head. It's not a thin sound. It's a very full um, sound. So we just wanna establish that if there is a vowel to kind of act like a mother vowel, it's kind of this yawning, dopey, like that. So what you want to do is if you're using vowel shapes as a means to sort of bring you into style, you can always, you can always look. The delivery man always comes during a lot. Is that? So you can always look at the style of the artist, but you don't want to go go too much on like especially if it's like a rock artist you want to be kind of neutral to um neutral to subtle about it <laughs> molly hi mabel she can't help herself she's so wild so if if we don't want to go unless we want to sing some opera but we do want to go it's more contemporary we want to use that as a frame of reference but your style the style of the music will always dictate kind of what shape of vowel so open your ears to to that open your ears to that so now that we've done e now we're going to go from e to ooh. 